My name is uh, Rotem Yosef. I'm the global lead for cloud economics partnerships for AWS. And today I'm going to speak with you about building the business case for your customers. We're going to review the theme, the framework, how we can support you as partners in country experience and partner experience. Let's talk a bit about how the cloud economics team interacts with our customers. We meet our customers in two different stages in the cloud journey. First, on the foundation stage, we help them build a business case and have them understand that AWS is good for their customers and good for their business. Once that is done, we convince them. We help them on the migration stage with the cloud developing the cloud financial management capabilities, or basically the ability to manage AWS efficiently and not waste money while running on AWS. Today we're going to focus on the business value side of the equation. And this is our cloud value framework. We had a lot of conversations with our customers and we came to learn that our customers break our impact on them and on their customers into four different pillars. Cost saving, staff productivity, operational resilience, and business agility. Cost savings is the most sought after analysis when it comes to our customers, your customers. They would come to you and say, we want to understand how much would it cost us to run on AWS versus our current footprint. To be frank with you, while we will almost always, 99.9% .9 of the times, will be cheaper than uh, on-prem, this is not my favorite analysis. Let's use the following analogy. Look upstairs, look up there, look at the lights. Let's assume we had the most energy-wasting incandescent lights in the world in this room. You go out for lunch, we have lunch, we have fun, we come back. And while we were there out for lunch, a team of technicians stepped in and replaced all of those lights with high efficient LEDs. You step in, we have the best LEDs in the market. Aren't you excited? <laughs> what? Are you excited? Yeah! No, you're not excited! You're totally not excited. What did you have before? Light. What do you have now? Did it change anything? Exactly. What did you have before? You had an IT footprint. What do you have now? IT footprint. Did it change anything? No. Guess what? CFO will come next year and say, save 15% more. Doesn't matter how much you saved. It's like, it's like this one real transition to AWS saving God knows how much. I'll give you an example in a second about how much you're going to save. On the other hand, staff productivity, operational resilience, business agility, they impact your customers your customer, be more precise, your customers' customers, because your partners, you have customers, and they cater to their customers, right? So all of those impact your customers' customers, and that's what we want to be. Staff productivity is all about how, does your, how do your customer team, how do they manage to deliver more to their customers, internal and external? Operational resilience, you give me one more, they'll say uptime. Give me another one, security. And lastly, and I think most impactful, business agility. Deliver more in the same time, or deliver the same in less time. They're logically equivalent. But bottom line, the ability to move much faster for one's customers. Case in point, Live Nation. We spoke about saving. Live Nation saved 58% in one year. They started with 18% saving, that was the initial analysis, and then they optimized into 40% more, 58% savings in one year. Pretty impressive, right? They also improved their automation and backup processes with uh, managed services. They increased their availability from three nines to five nines. And lastly, they increased their innovation pipeline tenfold. Capture that. If you ask me what would be the one single bullet I would have taken from that slide, innovation pipeline. This is where you impact your customers. This is your, where your customers impact their customers with innovation. You see that the companies that innovate, innovate most are the companies that succeed most. So you can have a bit of lesser availability, your staff can be a bit less impactful, and you might not save as much money. But innovation is what drives the business. And increasing innovation tenfold is where companies win. So how do we help you, our partners? How do we help you with your cloud financial journey, uh, with your, sorry, cloud economics journey with AWS? We have an online training for you. We have migration portfolio assessment tool for you. It's an online tool. 
and we have partner support. Start with the online training. The online training is made of eight courses covering the basics of business value, basics of cloud financial management, and then how to use the Migration Portfolio Assessment Tool, or the MPA. Leading to the MPA, click. The Migration Portfolio Assessment Tool is a very powerful tool that can help you ingest data from your customer's footprint. It will take various types of uh, data files. It can be uh, uh, an analysis made by TSO Logic, which is an AWS service. It can be a CMDB uh, data extract that your customer just shared with you, or many more other options. And then it would translate that data into an analysis that shows AWS versus on-prem. It has over 100 variables that you can manipulate in order to customize the, uh, the analysis to fit your customer's footprint the way that they see the footprint, and many other ways to adjust and uh, improve the analysis. For those of you who are also working on migrations, the MPA will allow you to give a back of the envelope number, and sometimes even more accurate number, of the migration cost for those customers. The MPA is available to all of the select tier plus partners, so if you're not select yet, it's a yet another uh, good reason to transition to select. Let's take a quick look into the MPA. So the first thing you have to do is log into the Accelerate portal using your APN credentials. Make sure that you are using your APN credentials. There's a way to log in as a customer, but then you won't have access to the MPA. Next thing, select the portfolio assessment, and that will take you to this screen. Create your first assessment, click on that, and you'll go through uh, numerous stages. I'm just um, I'm jumping over those uh, stages that are pretty straightforward to the import wizard. Import wizard will basically take the file you ingested and align the schema in the file to the schema that the MPA knows how to handle. If any one of the columns is misaligned, you can manually select the right column and make sure that the schema is aligned correctly. Don't forget to also take a look at the units. In this case, we are looking at percentages. This is, I think, CPU utilization percentages. Um, it can either be a ratio, zero to one, or a percentage, one to 100. In this case, the MPA identified a ratio and selected zero to one. If you think that the MPA made a mistake, you can always switch it manually to a percentage. You completed the data ingestion, and now you might want to conduct some manual adjustments. You can select resources and use the above, uh, the, the above uh, fields to change specific values of specific, uh, specific resources. You can also change some what I would call global variables. As I said before, we have over 100 such variables that you can change to fit your customer's needs. They might have, uh, their procurement cycle might be, uh, oh, sorry, their depreciation cycle might be three years and not five years, um, or they might be uh, uh, having a more, uh, having a, a higher level of, of backup percentages than a standard customer. So you can change that to fit their needs and fit the way that your customers uh, run their business. And lastly, you can produce a report. You can share it with your customer in the visual form that we have in the tool, or you can export it to an Excel that can be either shared with customers or used to inject in your own special sauce. Many of our partners actually take the Excel, use the data, from the Excel to build a report that fits the customer's needs and also include analysis that are not part of the MPA. So that's how you differentiate yourself as partners. I would like to introduce Sudit Devan to share with you some uh, in-country experience. Thanks, Ratham. Uh, my name's Sudit Devan. Um, I'm the Cloud Economics Lead for Australia and New Zealand. Um, so uh, I guess a big part of my role um, and the cloud economics team's role in general is to help customers understand the commercial part of moving to AWS. Um, and a big part of that is helping customers with their business case. And um, we're working with customers on their business case and, and looking at Australia and, and the demand that we're seeing for business cases, it was very clear from the start of my role that working with partners to help partners help their customers uh, with their business case and the commercial side was, was super important. So uh, 2019, this year, we built out um, a cloud economics partner program in Australia, 
um, in a very small sort of um, scale uh, for, for 2019, with plans to scale that out in, in 2020. Um, so today, what I really want to talk to you about is um, a little bit of, of that program, how we went about it, uh, what were some of the outcomes, and then I'm going to hand over to Josh um, over here, who's from our partner, Versant, um, in Australia. He's going to talk you through some of the experience that he's had on that program uh, and with his customers as well. So before we go into that, I just want to give you a couple of random facts about Australia and the Australian market, uh, just to sort of level set a little bit uh, before we go into the actual program. So the first fact that we're seeing in Australia is that the business case and the migration business case is a really good lead indicator for an actual cloud or AWS migration. Um, we're seeing that customers who go through the business case process you see all those great metrics, things like reduction in sales cycle, um, you know, a much faster commitment uh, from the customer. Uh, you see um, an acceleration in terms of the way they migrate. So you see all these great things um, that actually happen when you go through these the, the, the business case. And when you actually explore as to why this is the case, you actually realize when you do a business case, and, and I'm sure you all would sort of agree with this, is that it does take a little bit of effort. It takes a bit of effort from, from ourselves as AWS, from the partner, from you, yourselves, from your customers. So if a customer is actually committing to do a business case, it's a really good indicator that you know, they're, they're quite serious about the migration into um, AWS. The second thing, uh, just linking to that migration, um, we focused a lot of the Cloud Economics program on migration competency partners because of that link. Um, and, and, and we love this because when you kind of think it through, our migration competency partners are best placed to hold, hand, to hold the hand of the customer from business case and com commercial valuation through to migration planning, through to actually carrying out that migration. So having that whole spectrum is super important, great customer experience, and there's nobody better placed to do that, certainly in the Australian market, uh, than our partners. So we have about 16 migration competency partners in Australia, and we work with a small subset of those in 2019 in building out the Cloud Economics Partner Program. Just to give you a little bit, um, just to jump into the end a bit, but in terms of the success we've had with the program so far, about 50% of the business cases that we've completed um, in Australia have been done by partners. And um, this is something we measure every week. Um, and something that we keep track of. So uh, it's really good to see that we're already getting some momentum, even though we've done it with a, with a small subset. So in designing this program, there was a couple of learnings that we, we took into account and, and a lot of feedback that we got from the partners. The first feedback was that classroom training and the traditional uh, sit everyone in a room, go through the training, was helpful um, and it was good theory, but you know, it was a really hard thing to retain because it's, it's quite heavy, it's quite dense, there's lots of tools, templates, all these sort of things. So it, it wasn't enough, uh, was, was the clear feedback from our partners. Linked to that was, very importantly, was how can we as AWS help our partners in an opportunity to troubleshoot, to uh, assist with any, any questions, any tool problems, any problems with some of the templates, um, there's never two, two opportunities or two migrations that look the same. So how can we help with that uh, was the other aspect. And finally, cloud economics in Australia, or I guess globally to a, to a degree, is quite, quite early in terms of the, the thought leadership and the thinking um, and, and you know, the, the pace at which AWS releases products and services. We need to make sure that ongoing development to the alumni uh, was there. So they were the three feedback that we got from our partners and something that we thought about. The final point that we sort of thought through was when we do this training, we don't want to end up with partners that are just cookie cutter with each other. We, we want to make sure that partners have a foundation from which they can innovate, from which they can um, add their own flair, their own creativity, so that they're bringing offers to the market that are quite differentiated uh, which is good for us, great for our customers, and more importantly, very, very important for our, our partners to make sure that they're not just going to get out of this program as a cookie cutter like the other partner that just went through the program with them. So very important from that perspective. So to achieve these things, we developed a four-phase uh, approach to training our partners in country, um, and I'll step you through them now. 
So the first was around uh, best practice sharing or, or a discovery. Um, so this is where we spend about three, four hours with our partners and really try to understand how they go about the business case journey today. How do they look at that business case and lead that into a migration um, with, with their customers today? So while this helped us understand you know, where we could inject value, where potential gaps were with the way partners were doing things, where we could help automate and speed up things, it also helped us get a good grasp of how partners were differentiating and how, what things were their own secret source, what were their own extra flair uh, that they were bringing to the table. So, so very important. It also gave us an opportunity to share the way we do things, the way our best practices work, and the ways that we do things at speed and we can scale very quickly. The next phase was around customized training. So based on the findings of that best practice sharing and the discovery, we worked through a training plan with the partners to really hone in on the areas that, that were, were a gap. So what we did this year, we wanted to make sure that not every training was um, just uh, was the same for every single partner. All the different partners were at different stages in their ability to do cloud economics and, and business case. Um, so the training could cover topics like cloud economics theory and, and sort of going through just at a broad conceptual level, what does cloud economics look like, the cloud value framework that you just saw from Rotham's slide, and how you start thinking about cloud economics. But then we also go a bit more specific into the tooling, how to use the tools, how to use the templates, and then finally, how do you build that executive presentation with the right messaging so that a CFO, so that the board, so that the CEO leadership team can read that and really sort of get an understanding of what this is going to do for my business. So super important from that perspective. The next stage was around pilots. So this was about taking that feedback on how do we support you in the deal? So um, as you can imagine, with the speed and the velocity of, of some of the opportunities that, that AWS has, it's impossible to support every single opportunity. So we sort of said, right, when you look at the pilots, how can we do a couple of pilots to familiarize each of our partners with the theory, with the tools, with the templates, with pulling that overall pitch together uh, to, to really get them confident with what they've just learned in the customized training. So with each partner, we've done about two or three pilots, um, and, and Josh will talk you through a few of them, to really sort of familiarize with uh, what they've just learned, how they use the templates, how they manipulate the data, where they need to make assumptions if, if the, the, some of those data points don't exist, because we don't always get the data that we want. Uh, how do you pull together that overall case? And the final stage was around, around launch. So launch was um, where we do two activities. So the first activity is offer development. So with offer development, we work through with our partners to structure offers around business case. And in Australia, we have two styles of business cases. We have a directional business case and we have a detailed business case. As you can probably imagine, the directional is a much more higher level type assessment and, and the detailed gets into a lot more granularity around the detail. Um, so with both of these types of offers, we, we structure that with our, with our partners in a way that these offers are uh, relatively repeatable. Uh, they are relatively the same in terms of duration. So there's a duration for a directional business case, duration for a directional business case. There's an agreed scope. And there's a pretty reliable cost range for, for, our, for customers who, who want to embark on this. So it's very important to get that structure. The reason why that's important is, is not just for the customers, but we then spend a lot of time marketing those internally to our sales teams. So in Australia, we spend a lot of time marketing, hey, you know, we've worked with Versant, we've built these offers with Versant, they're quite structured, they're quite repeatable, there's a clear scope. You know, if your customers need these services, it's all pretty clear. So we spend a lot of time with that. So that, that launch phase is, again, proving to be very important to create that awareness internally to um, an extremely large channel in, that, in the AWS sales team. So uh, we, when we go through that process, um, that process can take anywhere from uh, three months to six months is generally what we're finding in Australia. Uh, and it's something that you know, you're starting to see the results in terms of you know, the quality of business cases coming from the partners, the use of partners to drive business cases. You already saw that we're starting to get 50% of our business cases in Australia done by partners. 
Uh, and then finally, um, and, and importantly for partners, we're starting to see some of those business cases turn into uh, migrations and, and migration work for our partners. Uh, so it's a really pleasing result uh, in the Australian market. What's next for Australia? So um, as, as I said, we've had a pretty successful year in 2019 around partner enablement. So we're going to be onboarding um, a lot more partners in 2020 to really continue this, to continue the learnings, uh, and to sort of scale out the program in, in a lot more, um, with a lot more scale, a lot more partners, and a lot more reach for our customers. We're going to be driving a lot more self-service, and I guess, as you, as you can imagine, as we scale, um, we need to have a bit more self-service for our partners, so we'll be doing that around our, um, our templates, um, our tooling, um, and, and some of the thought leadership that we also drive as part of the Cloud Economics team. And finally, we're not going to forget about the partners that we worked with in 2019. We're going to continue to support that alumni and make sure that they've got the latest and the greatest when it comes to supporting their customers on AWS Cloud Economics. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Josh. I'm really happy that he's here to talk to you about um, what 2019 was for Versant. And um, yeah, please enjoy. Fantastic. Thanks, Sudith. I'm Josh Lopez, the Technical Director for Cloud at Versant. And my role really focuses on accelerating our customers' AWS adoption. Now, Versant was, uh, is a cloud uh, consulting company that was born five years ago. We have now scaled to 350 people across Australia, Singapore, and recently the United States. We're a premier consulting partner of AWS. We've got our competencies in migration, security, and DevOps. We've recently received our managed services provider status. We've also received our solution provider status with a product called Stacks. We're very, very proud at Versant to be named Australia's AWS Partner of the Year three years running. Fantastic achievement. And that's just really when we're delivering out our, those outcomes to our customer. Now at Versant, we've got a consulting service called the Yellow Brick Road. And that's really tailored to our customers to build out the strategy to effectively and efficiently really deliver their, what they want for adopting AWS. It's delivered in streams, anything from cloud platform design, cloud adoption strategy, maturity assessments, depending on the people, if they need to uplift their, their uh, cloud and DevOps capability, migration planning if they want to exit their data center and what that's going to look like. But today, I'll focus on the directional business case, which we've now folded into our YBR practice. Now, since joining the program, I've really got to thank Rotem as well as Sudith for working with us directly over the last six months We've really seen tremendous benefit from joining, from joining the program. It's really strengthened our ability to deliver business cases and given our people the tools and the techniques they need to effectively present business cases to our customers. Now, over the last, so in the past, when we were delivering business cases to our customers, this really would take normally around four to six weeks. And effectively, it's... Now what we've done is we've aligned those to best practices and we've actually reduced that down to about a week. Now this is being used through getting the pre-developed templates as well as the automated data gathering tools that you get once you're on program. This has given us the ability to now offer this as a service and we're calling the cloud economics assessments. The templates and the tooling that we've been received as a benefit of being part of the program has meant that we've been able to scale this consistently across all our new customers that wish they want to take the journey of putting a business case together to move to AWS. Now, this is directly from the directional business case templates, and this really resonated with us. It's given us a consistent way to showcase TCO to our customers. Now, I'm sure we've all seen before and we've worked before on spreadsheets and trying to sort of get a, a feel for how to actually really showcase this to our customers. But this in itself now gives us a consistent way to deliver business cases. And from the future, we're actually now going to showcase this. And this really resonates with the financial decision makers. This, is, this represents a five-year TCO. It gives the ability to see the return on investment that the customer will receive when moving to AWS and really breaks it down so you can have that conversation a lot earlier with your customers. Another benefit since joining the program 
is the credible insights that were received, and Rota mentioned the cloud value framework. And really, it's about building a compelling case. Our customers always drive us to really focus in on the cost savings that they want to receive, but it's really about the intangible benefits that you actually want to, want to really focus on. So we saw cost savings with the case study of Live Nation. They, they uh, have seen a 58% savings in TCO. For the customers that we work with, we really like to shift the, the, the focus right around transformation and really focusing on re-architecting those applications, focusing on serverless services, and we can see anything where between a 50 or 60% savings on TCO, just really sort of shifting that conversation right. Staff productivity, really focusing on the DevOps enablement that you'll get from moving to AWS, the mind shift, mind shift, shift from really focusing, getting the, the customer to focus away from manual tasks and all the way through to now focusing on automated tasks. And we've seen anywhere between 40 to 50% increase in staff productivity with the customers that we work with and really focusing in on the benefits that you get from moving to AWS. Operational resilience with AWS folding that into all of their services. And this is inherent automatically when customers move to AWS. You probably didn't realize that last week DynamoDB has now moved and shifted to five nines of reliability. Something the customers can just change with a, with a small configuration change, and they probably won't be able to do that on-premises. So this is really just inherent in moving and the operational resilience that you get when moving to AWS. And as Rota mentioned, with business agility, you, with all the services that are receive, re received when moving to AWS, this now gives the ability for the customers to take on all those services that have been released at reInvent and really push the features now straight into their, into their business cases and really showcase what they can actually do. And we've seen that throughout all the customers that we've worked with, capability that they didn't receive on premises to now really focus that into what they can actually do with the business. This is straight from the MPA tool and this is actually with a customer that we're working with right now. This in itself is a breakdown of what it would take, well, the AWS cost as well as what it is, is broken down for on premises. And this is an example of something we've actually been able to develop within a week. And the way we've done that from previously taking four to six weeks is using automated data gathering tools. So TSO Logic, which is an AWS service, we work with our customer to, to deploy that straight into the customer's hypervisor environment. That ran over a week. The data that we were, were able to extract out of that was then placed into the MPA tool. And we were given a view that then provided them with an understanding of what it actually will take to move to AWS. It then allowed us to shift the conversation away from the cost is because the, the customer was able to see what it would take and really then focus on the capability that they would receive when moving to AWS. So this is a really good example of now us streamlining the process, moving away from spreadsheets and really automating it all the way through to then really showcase what it will take in terms of the cost breakdown of moving to AWS. As I've mentioned, we've now folded in the directional business case into our yellow brick road process. It's really aligned to AWS best practices. And what, what I'd say when we, move, when we actually joined the cloud economics program, the customized training that our, our people received really benefited us, making sure that we could focus on the pre-developed tooling and the pre-developed templates that were able then to allow us to scale that into the cloud economics pr practice and really deliver this at scale. It provides us with that strategic roadmap to provide to our customers to really understand what, what investment they need to make to really then give them a, an ability to almost execute that immediately. And as, as uh, Sudith mentioned, this is now uh, really affecting our, our conversion rates for migrations. I'd like to talk through some customer success stories that we've had at Versant from first building our, our business cases, they then migrated to AWS, and they also received a lot more value when migrating. So first off, John Holland Group is an Australian construction company who embarked the journey with us through a yellow brick road process, where we looked at, my, at uh, migration planning, maturity assessments, but we also put together a directional business case for them. And this really gave them an understanding of the cost, but also the business agility that they would get from moving to AWS. They were able to take that business case to the board and it was successful. They partnered with us and we migrated all 246 servers over a period of seven months. 
Now, they obviously got some cost savings out of that, but they got some tremendous business agility, but now they can actually fold in a service called AWS Recognition, which they can put into their construction sites to make sure that they can analyze who's wearing uh, hard hats. So this really has now, now shifted the conversation right into the terms of all the services that they can receive now that they're full in, into their transformation journey in AWS. Mervac, a commercial building company, also embarked the journey with us in the Yellow Brick Road. We put together their cloud strategy as well as their business case. They were focused on cost saving as well as operational resilience. And with them, we also embarked on a seven month journey to move 196 workloads to AWS. But they really wanted to focus on the operational resilience. They hosted their data center in, within their building and they were actually seeing consistent outages with the air conditioning faults that would take out all of their, their, their production servers. So with, with them, once they've moved to AWS, this has now been taken away. They haven't seen a production outage within 12 months. So ultimately, you can see the real focus on the other benefits that they get from moving to AWS. I'd just like to leave you with some key lessons we learned since joining the program. AWS always say that they take on the undifferentiated heavy lifting when you take on the, pro when you take on the platform. We also can lean on the program leads to take that undifferentiated heavy lifting for you. They've given you predefined templates, uh, automated tooling to really streamline that business case process. So I'd really recommend as partners to lean on the practice, on the partner um, program to really accelerate that for you. Don't forget that building a business case is not a technology process, but it's really an opportunity for you to take on the entire organization on the journey to really understand the capability they can receive from moving to AWS. Now I'd like to wish we had silver bullets for business cases, but they don't, uh, don't exist, unfortunately. It's really about challenging the constraints of your customers. They're really gonna always focus on the cost savings that they will get. But it's all about the staff productivity, the operational resilience, and the business agility that they will get from moving to AWS. So I'd just like to end on, if for all the partners out here, just really to, lean out, to, to reach out to the Cloud Economics team to see how you can fold in that into your practice. So with that, I'd like to hand back to Rotem for some closing notes. Thanks, Josh. So you might recall that I spoke about partner support, but I didn't say anything about it yet, right? So let's talk a bit about the partner support that is available for you. Let's start with the MPA. We have a user guide for you online. You can access it uh, through the link on the screen. And don't worry about that. You can either snap it or you will get the uh, presentation in a PDF format after completing the session assessment. So uh, it will be available for you. There's also an FAQ if you want to take a deeper dive into MPA. And the email below is connecting you directly to the team that owns the MPA. So any technical question you might have regarding the MPA will be answered through this email. I'm also listening to this email, so if it's a more of a professional cloud economics related question, I might be chiming in and uh, replying to that uh, email. We also provide business case support, helping you ramp up your organization's capability, building up a team or a capability within your existing teams to handle customer, uh, customer business cases. It, it varies across the, the various regions, and the best way to figure out what's available for you is just to shoot an email to the email below. Again, uh, the presentation will be available for you after completing the session assessment. So let's finish with a call for action. I highly recommend you complete the online training. Spread the word, make sure that uh, all the relevant team members in your organization complete the training as well. It's very useful, very thorough. Yeah, I know I'm biased, but uh, all the partners I spoke with who took the training were uh, highly satisfied and uh, very happy with the content that they learned from it. So I highly recommend you take the training. Launch your first MPA portfolio. As I said before, it's a very powerful tool. When you launch a portfolio, there's an option to download the sample file. So you can download the sample file and then ingest that data to see what MPA can do for you. Play with it. Change the variables. See what MPA can and can't do. If you have a question, or you have feedback, you know where to send it. And lastly, if there's anything that you need from us, the Cloud Economics Partner Program, if you think that we can do something better for you, or you think that there's uh, something that we don't look at, we don't do, and might be uh, a good idea, shoot us an email. Let us know. 
And really lastly, we made us like a bunch of uh, really cool shades for you. <laughs> And we've got quite many of them. So uh, feel free after the Q&A, we're going to have a Q&A, but after the Q&A, feel free to come over to the stage, chat with us, and pick up one of those uh, shades. That's it. <laughs>